Good morning and welcome to today's presentation uh, entitled Understanding and Avoiding Scams Involving Cryptocurrency. Uh, my name is Mark Betterhoff. I am the program manager for uh, AARP Elderwatch here in Colorado. And um, this is a brand new presentation. I just wanted to get something out there because cryptocurrency has turned into a major issue. Um, and, and we will be recording today's presentation so it can be shared um, on our YouTube channel, uh, as well as you know, with anyone else who's interested uh, in viewing the presentation. Um, if you do have a question, please go ahead and insert it into the chat box. But this is just a kind of a quick overview of, about different types of scams that, that we're hearing about involving cryptocurrency. It's not um, anything to make anyone an expert on cryptocurrency uh, or, or scams in general, but, but looking forward to sharing with you today. For those of you who are not familiar with Elderwatch, uh, Elderwatch is a partnership between AARP and the Colorado Attorney General's Office that has been around for over 20 years. Um, we do education and outreach across Colorado and also have a, a volunteer staff call center that's part of the um, Colorado Attorney General's Consumer Complaint Line, where we field different inquiries about frauds and scams um, of all different sorts and, and direct people to uh, their appropriate resources um, given the situation. Just real quick, I wanna look at the top reports from older Coloradans to the uh, Elderwatch helpline uh, in 2022. Um, number one, imposter business scams. Uh, oftentimes someone claiming that they are with Amazon uh, whether it be on the phone uh, or through email or text. Uh, number two, identity theft. Um, these types of scams can happen in many different, many different ways, but oftentimes using the personal or financial information uh, of someone uh, to you know, gain something else. Uh, so we hear lots of these types of complaints. Number three, tech support and computer virus scams. Uh, this is a category one that's consistently been in our top five of most common scams. And, you know, often it is someone who is reporting to be with a big computer company like Microsoft, or maybe a computer virus uh, protection provider uh, like Norton or McAfee as well. And again, trying to tell someone that are going to help them uh, with their uh, computer issue, but in reality are, are trying to just take their money or gain personal information. Number four, uh, imposter government scams. Again, someone usually claiming to be with a large government entity such as Social Security or IRS, uh, possibly Medicare as well. Uh, number five, home repair and improvement. Um, typically, these types of scams are, are two, come in two different forms, either kind of a fly-by-night operation where someone shows up at your home and offers to do a project, never comes back. Uh, or it could be an issue that you're having with a contractor. So those both fall under this category. Uh, number six, online dating and romance scams. Again, this, these, this category has really um, ballooned uh, over the last three or four years, especially uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but again, meeting love interests online, but they're actually just trying to take your money or, or have you send them goods. Um, number seven, fraudulent sales. Oftentimes, this is an issue uh, that we're dealing with where um, people are trying to purchase something online. Uh, you know, one example that we hear about very frequently would be like a puppy scam, whether someone's trying to purchase a puppy, uh, or uh, in addition to that, it could be uh, different types of websites that are uh, kind of trying to sell goods. Uh, one of the other ones we're hearing about recently are keto-related scams, keto diet pills, that type of a thing. Um, number eight, sweepstakes prize and lottery scams. Again, this is one of those categories um, that just never seems to go away. It's off the scammer posing as publisher's clearinghouse and saying that if you send them a little bit of money or a couple thousand dollars, then you will be able to retrieve your prize. But in reality, um, the prize is never there and, and the calls keep coming uh, for more money and more money and more money. Number nine, phishing scams. 
Um, and again, again, the fishing category is, is often a catch-all for um, lots of different attempts to gain money or personal information as, by posing as another entity. Um, and then number 10 there on the list, non-stranger exploitation. Uh, typically when a, a friend or family member uh, is exploiting an older one, uh, older loved one or friend, um, and that usually means uh, taking their money in some way, shape, or form. So this is the top 10 list of, of scams that we're hearing about here in Colorado from older Coloradans. I will say that you know today's topic of cryptocurrency uh, really can fit in a lot of these different categories, uh, whether a business is, is requesting payment um, in cryptocurrency or you, know, you meet someone online and they're saying that um, they can help you invest in cryptocurrency, those different types of things. And so we're seeing some crossover with a lot of these scams um, and requests for cryptocurrency as well. So just keep that in mind uh, as we're going through today's presentation. So what is cryptocurrency? Um, and just the basics on this, again, I'm not gonna go into real uh, crazy detail, but um, it is a de decentralized digital money designed to be used online. Um, and it can be something that can be bought very easily, um, usually on an app on your phone, uh, through the computer, or at a cryptocurrency ATM, which are more and more prevalent these days um, than they ever have been before. Um, you'll often see them in grocery stores uh, or in gas stations. Um, sometimes they're the same thing essentially as a change machine, uh, like a coin star machine that you might see at a local grocery store in Colorado, like King Supers or City Market or Safeway. Uh, so uh, if you haven't noticed that before, I highly encourage you to take a look at those um, machines and understand that they are a point of entry to purchase cryptocurrency. Um, in addition, you know, a familiar types of cryptocurrency that, that people that might have heard of before, um, Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> Ethereum, Tether, and, and there are many others. I was going to list a bunch of other ones, but you know, if you you can do a quick Google search and and see the most common um, names of, of cryptocurrency that are out there, and um, understand that there are many many um, out there and and others that are being developed, um, you know, regularly. Uh, what they're what they're used for? Um, quick payments. Uh, also, oftentimes to avoid transaction fees that banks might charge. Um, also, cryptocurrency, you know, is, is known to offer some anonymity uh, in terms of the purchases that are being made or the transactions that are happening. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later. So cryptocurrency is stored in online digital wallets. Um, and a digital wallet is, un is a unique account for each crypto owner and is often a long string of numbers and letters um, that is unique to that owner. And, and you can think of it kind of like an email address or a phone number, again, something that's unique to you uh, that, that anyone can use that will um, then be connected to you as well. Um, and so that's the way I like to think about it in that way, but it's just typically a much longer string uh, of, of digits that are that are numbers and letters. Um, you know, digital wallets are, are protected like other uh, important online accounts. And so when you think about that, um, you need passwords and, um, and, and or fingerprints or facial recognition, that type of thing to access digital wallets in a lot of situations. But again, it's something that, that people Again, like someone who wants to log into your bank account or someone who wants to log into your email account um, would have to access in, so, in some way, shape, or form to get a hold of your digital wallet. And you think of your digital wallet very much like a wallet in your pocket, um, but the money uh, that you're holding in that wallet uh, is, is online or virtual. So, when we're thinking about cryptocurrency versus a more traditional form of, of, of currency like a dollar, um, you know, it doesn't exist in paper form. Uh, it is not backed by uh, the government in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's not insured um, by the FDIC. 
that we're, that we're very used to uh, when we're talking about putting our money in banks. Um, value changes consistently and can be determined by many factors. Um, and that factors includes, you know, just market value and, and different types of, of market um, pressures that can happen with regards to that specific type of cryptocurrency. And so just, it's something that important to remember that uh, it's not like the New York Stock Exchange where there's a set time of trading uh, with regard to the currency. It is more, um, it's just constant. It's, it's happening 24-7. Uh, and, and, and so that's why you see the value change. If you ever, um, you know, for instance, if you want to Google uh, what, you know, the value of Bitcoin is, you'll see that it's constantly moving. And I think that's important for, for folks to understand. Um, transactions happen between wallets um, using, again, those long streams of numbers and letters uh, and that can also be kind of simplified using a QR code as well. And so if you're, you know, sending money or you're sending Bitcoin um, or, you know, another type of cryptocurrency to someone, you need their, their string of letters and numbers or a QR code that is unique to them so that you can then send um, your cryptocurrency uh, to them uh, through this virtual fashion. So talking about um, payment with regard to cryptocurrency. So um, payments that you might make with cryptocurrency have no legal protections like something that would with a credit card. And so when I'm going to talk about scams in a moment, this is one of the issues that, that we have seen um, consistently it is, again, knowing that the protections are not there that exists. Um, you know, like the government protections that exist and, and, and banking regulations that exist um, as part of something like a debit card or a credit card. Um, you know, payments cannot be reversed unless they're sent back. So again, if you um, hypothetically, you know, send some cryptocurrency to another digital wallet and it's not the correct one, unless that person is, is nice and sends it back and said, yo, you made a mistake, um, then it's gone. Uh, it's very similar to using a peer to peer payment app like a Venmo or Cash App or Zelle. Um, you know, I've definitely had instances where money has been sent to the wrong person uh, or someone sent money to the wrong person um, as part of a transaction. Uh, and, and again, unless that person is nice and is willing to send that money back uh, in, as part of that transaction, that money is gone. So it's important to remember that. Um, some payment and transaction information can be potentially public and recorded on a type of ledger called a blockchain. And so again, when you're doing these types of transactions, when we're talking about that anonymity that I mentioned before, um, there is you know, public parts of, of many transactions or payments that are taking place. It might just be the amount of money. Um, it might just be uh, you know, the, the wallet that sent it to, you know, the person and the amount of money. Um, and people would obviously have to do some research to figure out what that transaction was about. But in some certain situations, um, there might be um, some information that, that other people are able to view. And I think of it again, very much like Venmo. Um, you, can, you can see where other people's transactions are looking like uh, in that situation. And so um, if, unless you wanna hide it. And so in those situations, I often hide it but it's but it is um, <laughs> what it is uh, in that situation. And there are people who can uh, sometimes view um, different transactions that are taking place. So what I really want to talk about today, you know, in addition to just getting a basic understanding of what cryptocurrency is, uh, are the different types of scams that we've really been seeing blowing up on our helplines uh, over the last couple of years and, and the growth um, in the amount of scams has really been uh, something uh, astronomical uh, in terms of, of reports and how that's had kind of changed the landscape of scams uh, involving cryptocurrency. And there's some numbers on the screen there. Um, number one, this is uh, information from the Federal Trade Commission, $1.2 billion lost out of 
you know, just over 40,000 reports um, in cryptocurrency in 2022. And just remember, a lot of these reports the FTC is receiving don't involve the amount of money lost. Um, and a lot of people, first of all, don't even report that a fraud or scam might have happened to them. So that $1.2 billion lost um, is, is quite potentially <laughs> grossly underestimated. Uh, and, and that's important to remember. Another statistic that, um, that I found in the FBI's 2022 report, $2.57 billion lost in crypto investment fraud alone in 2022. And so I'm not talking about all the different types of fraud um, that have been involved with cryptocurrency, but I am talking specifically about uh, investment fraud opportunities that, that folks have gotten involved with. Um, at the, and then have then reported to the FBI uh, and often to the website ic3.gov. And so um, that is one of the things that really uh, ballooned the FBI's amount of loss numbers. They, they, they collected um, losses of over uh, 10 billion as part of reports in 2022. And that was one of the things that, that investment fraud involving cryptocurrency that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, is one of the most common types of fraud uh, that folks have been dealing with. So um, in addition to that, uh, just a couple more FTC numbers. Um, it is the fifth most common type of payment method that, that was registered as part of the FTC's Consumer Sentinel. Um, ahead of that would be credit, uh, debit, peer-to-peer -peer payment apps, and gift cards. And then after that, the fifth, so the fifth most common type of payment method requested or used uh, as part of a scam. Um, and then, uh, and looking at that second number, but it's the second highest losses of any payment method. And so number one uh, was bank, or trans bank transfer or, or bank payment. And so number two is cryptocurrency. And so when you're looking at those um, credit and debit and peer-to-peer -peer payment app and gift card, uh, they are significantly lower in value and, and much uh, smaller transactions uh, the cryptocurrency ones and are much higher losses and and much uh, greater transactions when we're talking about that. So just understanding the scope of of um, how much uh, fraud is happening with regards to cryptocurrency and these numbers have, have really ballooned since 2021. Um, I should probably put some comparisons in here as well uh, for the future. So why are scams popping up? Uh, involving cryptocurrency. Um, just some, some theories that I have just with regards to how lots of scams work. Uh, their cryptocurrency, like other common payment methods used in scams, is hard to trace. And so again, like a wire transfer or a peer-to-peer uh, -peer payment app payment or a gift card, again, it's very hard to trace. That's a very quick transaction. You know, people again can do it on their phone. Uh, people can uh, do it at their grocery store. Um, and so again, it's a quick transaction where the scammer can receive the money very quickly, instantaneously. Again, no protections, as we talked about before. Um, there's not a lot of government regulation around cryptocurrency at the moment. Um, it's more accessible than ever has been before. And so again, with, with people being able to access um, you know, different types of, of programs on their phones, on their tablets, on their computers, as well as uh, cryptocurrency ATMs. Um, it's, it's very easy for someone to uh, access and, and send cryptocurrency. So again, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, this, this type of scam has really ballooned. It's not widely understood by a lot of people. And so there's still a lot of confusion about cryptocurrency, what it's used for. Um, and, and how to um, kind of navigate it. And so I think that also leads to the amount of scams that have grown. And also there's kind of a little buzz around cryptocurrency. I, uh, in, in the last couple of years, we have seen celebrities uh, who have been um, promoting cryptocurrency in different ways, shapes and forms. We've seen it kind of more in the mainstream media. Uh, we've also seen um, a bunch of you know, 
articles about cryptocurrency, we've also heard of situations where people have made a lot of money um, through different types of cryptocurrency as well. And so I think just being in the mainstream media uh, makes people more comfortable with it, makes people think that they might um, need to get to be a part of it. Um, they don't want to miss out on the opportunity to potentially, you know, make an investment and make a lot of money. And so I think that also kind of contributes to especially those investment scams that I was talking about before, uh, as well as, as other types of, of kind of willingness to be involved uh, in cryptocurrency. So common scams that we're hearing about uh, as part of the helpline and that are being reported through all different types of, of agencies, um, purchasing of products or services. And so again, when a vendor is demanding payment in cryptocurrency, uh, it's a red flag of a scam. So lots of legitimate businesses will not do this. Um, they'll offer uh, you to pay in different ways, shapes and forms, more common forms like a, like a credit card, uh, obviously. Um, so a lot of the times when, when a scammer is uh, demanding that you only receive payment using cryptocurrency, um, it might be someone who is an imposter of a you know, more reputable business. Uh, for instance, if you received a phone call or a text message from someone claiming to be at Amazon and they are saying that um, you know, your payment's overdue uh, in terms of your bill, but they, but they also need you to, um, instead of using your credit card like you might normally do or a gift card, uh, they're asking you to uh, pay with cryptocurrency and away from the platform, that would be, you know, definitely a red flag of a type of a scam. And so again, this is something that we're hearing more and more of uh, is again, that, that kind of demand for payment of a product or service using cryptocurrency should definitely be a red flag of a scam. Investment um, scams are really, really common right now uh, with regards to cryptocurrency. And again, this goes back to, I think, confusion about, about cryptocurrency and not necessarily understanding um, how, it, how it all works. And so there are people out there who you might encounter on social media who will tell you that they can double or triple your money because they are uh, a crypto investment expert. Um, and, and, you know, like any type of investment that we hear about, it's important to know that a guaranteed return uh, is, 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 unlikely um, any type of legitimate offer. And so again, um, I personally have had plenty of people reach out to me on Instagram, uh, be trying to become my friend, and then uh, will go down the line and start um, telling you that, that you know, they, they know of a platform that I can invest on. And if I put, give them $10,000, they'll turn it into $20,000 tomorrow, that type of a thing. Uh, and so it's important to know that this type of scam is out there. And when we're looking at those numbers from the FBI, uh, this is really that type of scam uh, that has, has really hooked people in because oftentimes what happens is, is those scammers will show uh, you a fake investment platform to make it look like the money that you have invested with them is growing. Uh, but in reality, it's, it's, you know, just to screen um, your money and then you're never actually able to get your money out. And so again, this is one of the most common types of scams we're hearing about involving cryptocurrency. Uh, and it's really with regard to that uh, different type of investment that people are not fully aware of. Very similar to um, investment, uh, we have had quite a few situations where someone has gotten involved in a romance scam where that person who they are having a conversation with then to uh, kind of purports to be or has a brother or family member or friend who is a you know cryptocurrency investment expert and um, they ask you to invest with them you know gaining your trust by also uh, kind of reporting to be in a relationship with you as well. And so I think it's really important that, that folks know um, that these types of scams are going on. They start on different social media sites like Facebook and Instagram, but they also start on um, different types of dating sites as well. And so just know that there are bad actors out there who, again, might be looking for um, 
right? What, what they claim to be looking for is a love interest, but in reality, they're looking for personal or financial information. And, and sometimes in that form, they will um, ask for money so they can invest crypto for you or, but again, it's money that just leaves behind. Um, there's also situations where uh, someone might be blackmailing with blackmailing you. And so, you know, in this type of situations, they might have compromising photos uh, and then they'll request crypto as payment as well. And so just know that uh, it's these different types of romance scams often involve, again, that very quick uh, payment that, that they'll request um, through cryptocurrency or also um, the potential for um, creating an investment. So important things to remember in terms of avoiding um, different types of crypto scams. And the three that I've talked about are the three that we've really just seen so far. Um, that payment involving cryptocurrency for a product or service, um, investment scams, as well as romance scams. I suspect there's going to be a lot more types of scams. Um, I can see tech support scams and maybe government imposter scams. Uh, also uh, involving payment via cryptocurrency as well. But here's some kind of just general tips for avoiding scams that involve cryptocurrency. So um, do not pay for a product or service uh, using cryptocurrency. You know, use traditional forms of payment that, that, that normal businesses are requesting, I think is really important. Um, never believe guaranteed returns, especially in these instances of uh, different types of investment. Um, the people who are trying to get you to invest money, again, are, are professionals and uh, what they do and, and what they do is, is are trying to scam people out of money. And, and so um, they're gonna be smooth talkers, really trying to tell you that, that they can get a, get a lot of money for you or double your money for you, but in reality, that money is gone. And so it's very important to remember that. Uh, don't trust someone who says they are a cryptocurrency expert. Uh, in a lot of these situations, again, it's a person who's just trying to convince you they know more than you uh, in, a, in a field that a lot of people uh, don't know too much about. And, and they're just trying to gain your trust so they can then, again, get your money and, and then get you to, you know, <laughs> and, and, and never give it back, frankly. Um, you know, avoid unsolicited contacts on all social media platforms. Um, so many of these requests right now, um, whether it be a romance scam or investment scheme, um, are, you know, <laughs> they're hard to control. And, and it's just, if you don't know someone, it's not a good idea to start talking to them. So again, highly recommend avoiding any type of unsolicited contacts on all social media platforms. I honestly only talk to people on social media who I know in person. Uh, and so I think it's uh, a lot of people are much nicer than me and we'll talk to everyone. Um, but a lot of those people you're talking to are most likely a scammer as well. Um, don't scan unknown QR codes. Again, this might be uh, if you're involved in cryptocurrency and you're scanning unknown QR codes or you're not familiar with um, what you're doing, uh, don't just start scanning them willy-nilly uh, like you would at a restaurant to see a menu. Uh, so be really, really cautious about that. Understand crypto ATM machines. Um, a lot of people who talk to us on the fraud helplines um, don't necessarily understand that they're putting their money in uh, into this machine and then it's going to a digital wallet. They're kind of just following instructions of what people are uh, telling them to do. And so understand that these digital um, ATM machines exist and, and it's you know their way of trying to take your money. Um, and watch out for business and government and postures. I think uh, this is going to be something that's growing. Understand that federal government, state government, local government, it's not going to be requesting funds via cryptocurrency. Um, and same with normal reputable businesses. Again, not going to be requesting funds uh, via cryptocurrency. Use credit cards and other types of, of methods that have protections um, rather than uh, trying to uh, pay via cryptocurrency. So just in terms of, of reporting um, these types of frauds and scams, uh, you know, the FTC is a great repository for all different types of frauds and scams. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, you can see cftc.gov right there, um, the SEC. Uh, and again, I think in the future, 
you know, there's lots of kind of conversation about different types of regulations around cryptocurrency. So this might be something that we see from, from these different types of, of commissions that you're seeing on the screen here um, around crypto. Uh, IC3.gov is one of the most common places I recommend people to report. And when I was giving those numbers earlier today from the FBI, uh, that's essentially where, where all those Numbers are coming from ic3.gov uh, and also reporting it directly to the cryptocurrency exchange company you use to send money it is important so they understand what's going on as well. They might have different ways of, of helping you solve uh, the issue that you're in. So uh, just my last slide summary of ways to avoid scams and all these have to do with cryptocurrency as well and just understanding that but there but in a general sense, I always like to end my presentation with these with this slide, um, you know, protecting and protect your personal and financial information again goes very much uh, as part of this presentation managing your phone calls not accepting unsolicited calls from someone who then requests payment via cryptocurrency or or ask you to invest. Uh, in this situation that you don't understand. Again, doing your research, understanding uh, the different types of cryptocurrency. And if you, if you do want to make an investment, you know, I highly recommend doing your research and understanding uh, the volatility of it. Uh, avoid contact with unknown entities. Again, it's okay to be skeptical or rude if that person is trying to take all of your money or, or use your personal information. You know, don't rush to act, think and talk to others. Again, go back, do your research, uh, talk to others who know something about uh, what's going on here. You know, again, consider unusual payment options, red flag. Uh, That's kind of the definition of this presentation uh, in a nutshell. If it sounds too good to be true, again, like something to the effect of someone doubling or tripling or quadrupling your money, um, it probably is. And there's reason to think a little bit more about that. And uh, sharing your story, reporting, all critically important as well. Oh, and I just want to answer the question that came in. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't see it before. Deposits in crypto do not earn, and the question is deposits and in interest do not earn interest or dividends. Is that correct? And so it, it's, it's, it's the value of cryptocurrency um, is all based upon, uh, it's, it's market-based currency. And so it's not like our traditional um, types of, of money that we might invest in a company. And so for instance, uh, if I were to put, invest $1,000 in Amazon, um, and that's a more of a traditional like stock option that, that you would be investing in um, and so in those situations, you know, you might receive interest or dividends and that type of a thing. In, in the cryptocurrency world, the money just is, continu is continuously fluctuating. And, and so, again, I would recommend, uh, Julie, that you look on um, a, just, just look at a cryptocurrency exchange and see how quickly it's changing. Um, and it's all changing kind of based on market forces. Uh, so, but that's a great question. It's very different uh, in, in a different type of investment uh, or, or uh, in terms of, of what we're used to in terms of stocks and bonds and that type of thing. I wanna thank you so much for, uh, Taking part of this presentation, and and you know, again, this is something new that we're just trying out, and I, I'm hoping that um, others are going to be able to to tune in, and and so they can understand a little bit more just about what we're hearing with regards to uh, scams that involve cryptocurrency. Have a great day, everyone.